It's sunny and warm, and the locals are sipping tea next to a modern Art Deco building shaped like an airplane. Miami Beach? No. A train from the 1930s chugs from the sea to the capital, 2,400 meters high through stunning mountain beauty. Switzerland? Wrong. A small country that won its existence by defeating a nation 20 times its size. A proud, stubborn group of warriors who act like winners. A land half Muslim and half Christian where religious conflict is no part of the national psyche. You find a mosque here and a church here, one goes to his mosque, one goes to his, and nothing happened. Where could it be? Africa, that's where. Eritrea, to be specific. In the 1930s, Mussolini tried to turn Eritrea's capital, Asmara, into an African Rome. They called it Piccola Roma, which is Little Rome. And adorned it with playful, modern architecture. Asmara, for me, is, is almost like an urban utopia. It's serving as a symbol of, of uh, Eritrean know-how, you know, that we inherited over the years. From Asmara to the Red Sea, a ride on the train reveals a stunning landscape of geography and people. Eritrea has uh, nine ethnic groups and nine languages. We are not uh, like the other Africans. We are Semitic, so we have a lot of Arabic, Hebrew, and Christianity. Nomads in some of the hottest desert on earth. It's very hot in this area. Therefore, they migrate to the place where they can find water. Others in isolated mountaintop villages. It takes nearly four and five hours to drive to the village. Christian and Muslim. Side by side. In a land where man first developed. It goes back to the Ark of Covenant, you know, with the Queen of Sheba, Solomon, the Old Testament. A land of both the ancient and the modern. It maintained both the modern and at the same time the permanent value of the society. Five and a half million people of different faiths, different ethnic groups, from vastly different geographies. Throughout the history of this country, no major, no inbred, inborn, major fights have been seen between the regions and the religions. What holds them together? It is their nationhood. You can speak a different language and live in one part of the country, and another one can live in another part of the country, but they can count their ancestry back to the same, to the same ancestor. I think our history has been a history of struggle. It took us a long time to, to free our country. A people who built schools and hospitals in the trenches. And we were hiding the enemy lines. We were printing our books. A pharmaceutical factory was, was established out there. Rise to nationhood. But after a long uh, bloody struggle, we got in our independence in 91. Now, we are an independent country.
Now, a land of fighters is fighting for its survival under a military standoff with Ethiopia. This is a no war, no peace situation that, that can tip either way. They won last time, but if there's a next time, will Eritrea survive as a nation?